Welcome to Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to talk about the 10 reasons why every business needs a podcast. Number one, you're going to land meetings with potential clients that you might not otherwise have an opportunity to meet. I think this is the number one reason a business should do a podcast. They may think revenue, they may think downloads, they may think content marketing, all of those are possible and important, but the number one way that a business can leverage a podcast is through networking. Let me start with a real world example of a client of mine. Leaders and Legends is a podcast hosted by Robert Vane. He does public relations for a living. And a podcast was floated as a way to, uh, uh, to promote his PR business. And it just didn't make sense to do like Facebook ads or other traditional forms of marketing. So a podcast kind of made sense, but nobody really wanted to listen to a PR podcast. And he's like, I'm not an expert in that. So he started a history podcast based on local history and has expanded kind of into worldwide history as well. And what that has done is it has given him an opportunity over 300 episodes to sit across from some of the most powerful and influential people in the city of Indianapolis because they love to talk about themselves. They love to talk about their accomplishments. And that has led to PR work because he's able to network with other people in other industries. Uh, that are influential and well-connected. And in most of these cases, if he had called up and said, hi, I'm in public relations, I know you don't have an ongoing crisis, but you might have one one day, and so would you like to spend an hour talking with me to get to know me as a business development lunch? They would say, click, no thank you, I don't have time for that. But if he says, do you want to come on my podcast and talk about something you're passionate about and the projects that you love and build rapport with me, and then I can follow that up with a lunch because we had such a good, great, a good time talking about maybe history books, then that turns into future business. So it's an incredibly powerful tool that most people don't think about when it comes to starting a podcast. And you have to think of it like uh, joining BNI like the Business Networking International or Rainmakers of the 21st century. I don't know if people are still doing Rainmakers, if that's still a thing. But, you know, 20 years ago, people would go to local networking groups that you'd pay $100, $150 a month, or they join things like a country club to network. So if you're spending a little money on a podcast to do some networking, what's the real difference, right? Number two, build a relationship with potential customers and existing clients in a more intimate medium. It's more personal than videos or written blogs. So you have to think of podcasting if you're a business like content marketing. So if you hire a copywriter to write a blog post every couple days to keep people coming back to your website for lead generation, are people really reading those? Um, are they checking out your listicles? Um, are they watching that $10,000 video that you hired some marketing agency to make that's on your YouTube just kind of sitting there and has 150 views? I don't know. I mean, podcasting is a much more intimate medium because you can take it with you. People have to sit and read something. People have to sit and watch a video, but they can sort of passively listen to a conversation that you're having with other people in your office or other people that you're you're interviewing as a business development thing um so it's a little bit more of an intimate medium because people are taking you with them as sort of a passive listener and you know this if you listen to a podcast that you really like you sort of feel like you're part of the, they're your friend you they don't know you but you love listening to them you would love to get lunch with them they're interesting people and you can be that for somebody else specifically your clients it could be an internal podcast for existing clients you know maybe you have a small to medium sized business with 50 to 60 clients and you're just not getting the opens on your email that you'd like well do a podcast because you know a 10 dollar or a 10 minute a week podcast or 30 minutes a week just kind of updating people on what you're doing interviewing those clients um, can help develop a better rapport with those existing clients number three break down existing complexities in your industry in a fun way 
One thing I have learned doing consulting is how incredibly complex the free market is in America and how many people do things that you just wouldn't think about. Um, you know, every single thing that you do, you, we sort of have like a, a really um, solid understanding of consumer products. Like I have money, I go on Amazon, I buy recorder. I buy microphone, right? Like that's how my, my brain thinks. But I've been surprised as an adult going out and talking to business owners, how they make like one tiny little piece of one little machine and they sell millions of dollars of this one tiny little thing, right? Or they're consultants that go out and do um, this specific, very specific complex task or they work in the construction industry and uh, connect towns um, with developers, right? So there's a lot of complexity in the American uh, business to business market. And you can easily break down those complexities for your customers, for potential clients, um, for the people on your social media. That might spark some ideas for them that might generate some business for you. So number four, it's cheap content marketing, right? Going back to that earlier point, how many times have you gone, oh, we need to really market this business, we need to advertise, what do we do? Do we spend $10,000 a month on Facebook ads? If you're business to business, is that really worth your time? You know, do you make that, you know, $2,000 brochure or 10 to $20,000 video that you use in some of your sales trainings or, or marketing materials that, I mean, when's the last time you read a trifold brochure? Right? We all have them in our house right now. We've not read any of them. Um, but a podcast can be used as uh, cheap content marketing because it's two people having a conversation or three people having a conversation. And you can record that conversation on video, then hire somebody fairly cheaply to then go and chop that stuff up and put that on your LinkedIn. Th th there's a huge market for using video to promote your business on LinkedIn that is going to be the future of content marketing. These short videos, short form videos like Reels and TikToks. Um, TikTok's the only place giving you organic growth right now. So if you're someone, let's say like uh, a small Etsy store, then you could take a machine, you know, you, 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 um, you, know, you make some sort of ceramic thing that you sell, right? Or you're a leather maker. You know, all you have to do is take your cell phone, buy a little tripod, light it really well, cr do the creation of the thing and put it on TikTok with uh, the the latest, you know, viral sound and get 20,000 views on the thing because you're using hashtags. Really uh, a huge advantage there in terms of using your podcast in these conversations to start to spread your message. I have another podcast that I did talking about should you do video for your podcast. And I go into the pros and cons of video and how to kind of do it a little bit more. So go check that out um, on the Podcasting and Platforms podcast. Uh, check it out in any iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Store. Number five, develop uh, authority in your space. So podcasting is still very new. So there are not that many people doing podcasts yet. Um, so if you take something like I work with a guy, uh, the environmental transformation podcast, and Sean has become the authority in his space and is speaking at conferences and doing his podcast at these conferences that have two to 500, a thousand people showing up for environmental, you know, transformation and all that comes with that and sustainability. Um, so specifically like businesses and how they can be more sustainable and they go to these conferences to kind of have those conversations. Well, Sean's kind of the top of mind guy because he's one of two or three podcasts that is doing it. I'm starting an Indiana history podcast because there's only a couple people doing Indiana history podcasts, but there's a huge market for it. And so it will allow me to become an authority in the history space where I can build community around history nerds and we can all get together and have fun. And then I can, um, you know, make money off of these events or start a convention or monetize my podcast easier because I'm an authority in that niche. So number six, develop your presentation skills. Um, in the 21st century, in the internet age, you have to be 
someone that can present your ideas well and have better grammar than I just had in that last sentence. Um, but I'm doing all of this top of mind. I am uh, having this conversation with you without any notes. I have my 10 bullet points here that I'm reading off of, but I'm able to communicate my ideas to you without a lot of ums, without a lot of stutters. I do have a lot of little ticks like, so let me transition to the next thing. It annoys me. I can't get rid of everything, right? I still say fur instead of for. I'm a Hoosier. That's how it is. But I have learned to develop my presentation skills. Not only do I know, um, so, so I just did an episode on Christopher Columbus, and I spent tens of hours of researching this. I knew how to put together the outline to present that information in a way that I wanted. I had my little skeleton outline, and then I didn't read a script when I was doing it, but it sounds almost like I'm reading a script. I'm very proud of myself for it, by the way, so I'm bragging about it a little bit. But that is just the result of doing hundreds of hours of research, writing, presenting, and doing these podcasts. And so you become uh, somebody that can communicate your ideas more effectively, which will allow you to excel in your vertical and within your company and maybe land a better job if you don't like your current company because you've developed skills. Even if nobody's listening, you're putting in the time and work to present yourself and do a little personal growth. I think it's one of the undersung um, values of doing a podcast uh, for your business. Number seven, build a community. If you've got 150 people listening, it's the right 150 people listening. And you can then go, I have never worked with a client that has not paid their entire fee through advertising in their vertical. So everybody that I've worked with has been able to go out and get sponsors and cover the, my costs. Maybe not all of them, but most of them get most of them covered, right? Because those 150 people or 200 people that are listening to your podcast every episode are the right people. Instead of trying to spray and pray using traditional advertising, you're talking directly to the people that might buy from you, that might be potential employees or employers. You're connecting with people on a very real level using the content marketing of podcasting and maybe using video at the same time. And then you take that a step further. You start holding events and getting people together, going back to that history idea, right? I'm going to start a media channel and then I'm going to connect people in person and then that leads to more people. I'm doing an event for podcasting and platforms where I'm inviting all of the new, uh, all of the Indianapolis podcasters. So this podcast mixer that I'm putting on in partnership with Indie Lightbound Studio, another podcasting service here in town that has a studio, I'm a consultant. They need somebody that does consulting and has an audience. I need somebody that has a studio, put that together, invite our networks, and there's a lot of people showing up who are interested in starting a podcast. It's a safe place for them to come and ask questions about how to start one. It's a safe place for people to come and talk about the thing that they're nerdy about, right? And in that night, a lot of business cards will get traded because I started this podcast I built a community and I, now I'm leveraging that community to invite people in person to enrich people um, so they connect and just sort of feel like hey, my wife is tired of my wife or husband or partner is tired of hearing me talk about podcasting. I need to go talk to somebody else that actually knows what they're talking about. I don't just want to stare at TikToks about podcasting all day. Number eight, build online traffic. Going back to that content marketing uh, idea you are bringing people to your website to watch your podcast and you can hit them with that little sales thingy the little uh, lead magnet that you have to build your email list so you can market to them a little bit better it's just another way to bring people back to your website because you're using a fun piece of content to bring them back as opposed to just posting on linkedin please visit my website and join I know I've posted my lead magnet 18 times this month, but I really need you to sign up for my email. Give them something of value instead of begging. Number nine, use niche interest to talk to the right people. We've covered this a little bit, but again, you're talking to the right people instead of kind of that traditional advertising. I won't belabor the point, um, but I think it's uh, another important point. Number 10, character-based marketing is more effective than the old model of advertising. And really, character-based marketing is an old model of advertising. 
Who's the spokesperson for GEICO? You can name them, right? Who's the spokesperson for Safeco Insurance? Do you know, have you ever seen a Safeco? There might. I use Safeco, but I've never seen their advertising. I just went through an agent. I'm sure they do marketing to agents. But you probably know the spokesperson for GEICO. It's the Gecko, right? You probably know Flo. Who, what, what character sells Frosted Flakes? So these are very clear examples of advertising, but there's a little bit of, um, uh, it's a, you know, I think the, the future of advertising and marketing is a little more character-based and building communities around characters, around ideas, around niches, instead of kind of just, again, spraying and praying $10,000 on Facebook ads and hoping we hit the right person. You, you, you already have that because you're kind of targeting lookalike audiences if you're doing Facebook marketing. You're targeting people in geographical areas that you think or niches that might want to buy your product. You don't necessarily, unless you're tied, go and spend $30 million on a television campaign if you're a small business. You just don't have that that amount of cash that that takes to do the repetitiveness. Advertising works because of repetition, and it costs a lot of money to build repetition. And so podcasting can be a cheaper way to do some of that repetition. And podcasting inherently is building a relationship between the people on the podcast and the people listening to the podcast. So not only on the Chris Spangle show and, and we are libertarians and our network, you know, you're listening to the relationship on the boss hog of Liberty between Brian Nichols and Remzo Martinez and Chris Spangle and Jeremiah moral and their interactions as friends. But then you're also kind of being drawn into that because of their characters, because there's things that you like about Remzo that make you listen to this show. There's things that Remzo does that kind of make you mad and so you don't listen to that show. There's things you like about Chris Spangle that you like or don't like. And it's sort of like having a relationship with that character, but those articulated traits that you can have on a podcast, those inside jokes that you can use. As a broadcaster, I use those little hooks all the time because when you go to Aldi, I want you thinking about me, right? So I, everybody loves Aldi. So I go online and I talk trash about Aldi. It's a very safe, silly thing. I talk trash about Canadian geese. And uh, everybody hates Canadian geese. And somebody needs to speak up for those people and be their voice. I have nominated myself to be the number one hater of Canadian geese on my Facebook circles. And the number one hater of Aldi's which is a, a little bit of counter-programming because it stands out. It's a little bit novel. And so now when people see an Aldi meme, they post it to my Facebook wall. Those are traits of a character that kind of remind people of you. And then they go and say, oh, let me go check out. I wonder what that guy's up to. I haven't seen any of his posts because Facebook has pushed him down the algorithm. Um, so I use my podcast to create some of those little, like, hooks, you know, um, but there are also sort of bigger parts of my trace, tr my personality that people connect with, you know, my, um, sarcasm or the fact that I will take a subject and read deeply and widely across it to try to find the truth about a current event on the Chris Spangle show. People enjoy that, right? So all in all, your listeners start to build that relationship with you. So, um, it's a really imp important way. It's a lot more personal than just sort of like a billboard ad on a Facebook site or LinkedIn advertising, which is not that effective and very, very expensive. Uh, and people just sort of see the, the slickly built image that your advertising agency made in Canva, and then you just keep scrolling and move on. So thank you for joining me here on Podcasting and Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle. And I really do appreciate it. If you are interested in starting a podcast for your small business, then reach out to me at chris at podcastingandplatforms.com. Go to leadersandlegends.net. You can just book an appointment with me. Uh, or make sure you sign up for emails. If you're just kind of still, I don't know about this, then go to my website, podcastingandplatforms.com. Sign up for the email and uh, just continue to get the content. And then maybe in six months, you'll 
see what I'm saying and you really want to join and start a podcast. So um, even if you don't want me involved, it's going to benefit you. So thank you for listening to Podcasting Platforms. My name is Chris Spangle, and we will see you again soon.